everyone. Welcome to the Ecosystem Innovation video series. Um, today, I have my friends from PwC with me, so Patrick and uh, Jan Herman. Um, we're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about cost improvement and reduction, um, especially related to the manufacturing of products. Um, it's a complex topic, uh, one that contains, of course, multiple different factors, uh, especially when you're considering how you streamline in manufacturing, uh, manage your supply chain, and this naturally then links into how you procure effectively. And in today's day and age, um, supply chain resilience um, and the challenges that we've got in terms of the costs that we're incurring as businesses uh, is under the spotlight. But this isn't just about um, a, a procurement conversation. It connects a lot of different things. And the ERP, of course, uh, becomes central to the whole thing. Um, the ERP is where you're pulling the granular detail at a component level, and can, that can then give you the static information as to what your components are priced at. In procurement, though, we know that pricing is anything but static. Um, so when the business is asking us to claw back savings and help margin, well, it takes a lot of work to pull that together. You then have to look at each component, understand the market, um, what the pricing is today, and then pull it all together to see if you're overpaying or underpaying, you know, if, if that happens. So you can advise the business accordingly. PwC have come up with a, a really interesting way um, of looking at this. Uh, so I thought it would be a really good conversation to have. So why don't we talk to, to Jan and Patrick uh, around what PwC are doing um, when it comes to this. And, and guys, you know, let's, uh, let's talk about your viewpoint and what you're seeing in the market today. Yeah, thanks Mo again for the invitation. I'm happy thanks, to be here Mo. and to discuss that. Um, actually, what we are seeing, and we have seen that in the study of last year, cost improvement is still one of the most important topics for, for the CPOs and the procurement guys um, around the globe. I guess there's nothing what is a regional <laughs> aspect. Um, we started to think about, and we discussed about that further in other videos, that the transparency about the entire supply chain um, is very, very important to get more transparency and more yeah, resilience in, in your supply chain. Uh, and then uh, we use this um, yeah, aspects we are facing in the moment uh, to use a yeah, common lever actually, or common lever actually, uh, what we are using in procurement a long time ago already, but use it now to get more transparency in the end tier supply chain. So this should cost modeling. Okay. This should be something where we really we are break down the components into their pieces and bit had a transparency over the entire supply chain and yeah understand okay how are the um, suppliers on each um, on each step involved which prices what are they doing what machines are they using what CO two footprint are uh, and at their location etc cetera, etc cetera. so we are using a common lever, that's clear, but we use it in a broader perspective of the end tier supply chain. Okay, and how are you doing that? Actually, what, what, what we are doing is that we, will, in the first step, figure out, okay, what are the right components to consider in such a way and what such detail and complex way and go into this deepness. So they, they, we have to figure out where's the tier down what to do as well. So figure out, okay, what are the uh, part details, shapes, mass, design, et cetera, et cetera. Second step, going into the analysis of the specification, why you are using this part. What is the relevant utilization of this part? Why you are what is the utility for the client, et cetera, et cetera. So understand why we purchase the component or why we are buying it. Okay. Third one is bring prices to the components in the end. Yeah? All parts, all services, all um, logistics, um, all overheads, bring prices to all the pieces of, uh, all of this tier down and yeah, get a clear view how the cost comes together to a real price. For this, how robust is that? So variance analysis. So what happens if the labor costs increase? What is when the energy increase? What is when we change something? Um, so to understand and make a detailed analysis of how uh, the, the total price reacts when we change them. And last but not least is in the, in the end, of course, review it. So understand uh, and discuss it with suppliers in the entire supply chain to figure out, is that the right 
um, requirements? Is it the right specification? Do we understand it right? Why you have done that? We understand you do it by this way. Did you try this machine? Did you try this site? So to, to get a brief overview in this five-step approach on one component. And you see already, it's a complex piece. It's a very yeah, work-driven piece. So be sure what you would like to consider in this. So, yeah, so, so when we think about that, I mean, today, uh, I was trying to allude to that in, in, in my introduction, I think if you do that component by component, that's a huge amount of work. And today, uh, either organizations have built systems to, to do this, um, or they're doing a lot of this stuff um, by taking data sources from multiple places, right? So what is it that should cost uh, modeling from PwC does to kind of harmonize all of that together? Actually, um, what we are facing, and maybe Patrick can come to the to the databases we would like to use and how we, how we would like to connect it to the system and integrate it, because then you are right. Then we when we integrate it in the system, we can, on an easier way, include everything. But maybe we from PwC would like to provide a pay per use model to say, okay, I have this component. I would like to consider that, so but I won't pay for an entire suit or something like this. I would like to have an app and the possibility to use it for a special component, go to the PwC, uh, go to the PwC app and do it and create it. And if, you, if they would like to, to get help from our engineers of PwC to, to get a better view on that. But maybe Patrick, you can introduce a little bit how we can connect that to the systems and make it easier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks Mo and thanks Jan. I think for for our clients, it's, uh, it's uh, this, this Cost pressure is there, as we we have spoken, and um, I think uh, for most of them, the the cost coming from uh, from the supply products is uh, is also has a high impact on, on total product costs. So then it's absolutely clear that the, the the view should also go on the on the supplier side, and uh, I think having a, a channel to to go there and, and do some collaboration there is is key, and for also especially for the future and. I think uh, in this discussion, yeah, uh, Ariba, SAP Ariba brings that channel uh, to our customers um, to, to open the world to, to the supplier side. And um, in, in, when talking about product costs, having clean sheet, um, clean sheet um, options and um, having cost breakdowns in, the, in their RFPs they're sending out. And um, so, there we are leveraging that knowledge coming from the supplier and include that that price is in, in our models then that's the next step but and that's that's important to i think that's an important idea we all, a lot of times we're talking about integrating system so that means in the end we need data in a digital format and in, in former times we had spreadsheets we had emails and whatever but we need a system to collect that data in order to, to bring it to, I don't know, the same tool, but also to other tools in a data lake or whatever to then build up knowledge and use it in, in cost models or, um, or other applications. Yeah? So, um, so this digital channel via the Ariba network and, and the product sourcing functionalities, I think that's, that's really a, a cornerstone of this digital uh, 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 cost models. Yeah? So, so I think, so understanding what, what you've said at the beginning is it's like building the foundation of how you're going to tear down, um, you know, the manufacturing uh, of, of a particular item to component level, looking at those components, ground up, understanding and providing the assistance so that people understand what the current as is situation is and what the future state potentially could be connected into the product sourcing tool by SAP Ariba, right? So that's where you can take that information, feed that in at bomb level, right? Into the sourcing process to be able to manage that through then as part of your, your, your typical sourcing process, I guess. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, oh, sorry. Yeah. Maybe, maybe to emphasize, right, maybe, maybe you emphasize, um, uh, to emphasize this, when when we have normal, let us let us let us discuss a little bit what what the the former the old lever is doing. Yeah, yeah? The exactly. System, the, the system is there. They have to put the, the all the information what they have by their 
own uh, research or whatever into that tool. If we're using platforms like Ariba or information out of the ERP systems, we have a lot of information already available. We don't have to do the research. We, don't have to, we can use a supplier who includes the, 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 um, the prices. We can use it for the tender itself. So everyone has to fulfill already a, a bill of material with their prices and with their deep knowledge about their technology, etc. So we are coming from a situation that we collaborate in collecting data to understand how much is in this component. And this, in the end, tools like Ariba gave us a shortcut to get more information on that and get more components into the system and more understanding of the entire supply chain. So very important piece more. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And maybe, maybe in addition to that, um, I think uh, what is always key is uh, having good technology in place, but also make sure that this technology finds its way into the organization and, and yep. leveraging the processes um, we, we want to have. And I think also there are a uh, good system are not only, let's say, technology focused, they're focusing on the on the business process. So in this in this regard, when talking in this case is about Reba, um, if you look at the sourcing process, it's one thing to have a cost model in place. The other question is then who will use it and, and when will he use it or does he use it at all? And I think if we if we have a system which emphasizes this process around we 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 make sure that our organization works in the works uh, in the way we we want it to work and also uses the tools we wanted to use. So also I think that's a, a very big topic for our clients: how to make sure that the tools are actually um, used in their organization. And that's so. That, but there's you've got your five-step process that builds the foundation of how you can be more effective with cost modeling and therefore the should cost model. You've then got that integrated into the product sourcing process with with Ariba and the ERP with the with the integration between the two systems, which is a big thing, right? I mean, it doesn't. There's something that not, you know. I, I don't <laughs> want to just fly over that because it's an important piece and that integration that's been built. Um, I think people don't often realize how important that is and why that's a big differentiator for SAP and Ariba. But then it's it's taking that five-step process and the solution, embedding it within the business to say, this is our go forward model. This is how we understand what's happening at a component level. And you're not having to do, and it's making it more efficient because you're not having to do a lot of that either manually or having to build systems. The other beauty of it, I think, is that you're using it as a paper use. So if you wanna only do that on uh, one component or 10 components, you can use it extract the information, gather the intelligence that the system gives you from PwC, work with PwC to take some of those outputs and put it into the, the, the overall supply chain process. But then you can just go, okay, I'm done, right? So it's not a buying a solution on an annual basis. It's, it's a, I'm gonna use it for what I need it for. Now, do you as PwC, and I'm, I'm probably asking an obvious question, when you're talking to your customers, do you advise them on the components that they should be using this process for? And, and how do you do that? Yeah. Actually, the, of course, the, uh, the tool utilization itself needs, of course, a little bit of experience. Yeah? This yep. is nothing where you can say, okay, yeah, yeah. it's like uh, an app on your iPhone and you can use it directly. So you have to be a little bit experienced here. Um, of course, we are offering um, that we help with our engineers to run through uh, components on that. So if you have a very specific one where you maybe have not the deep knowledge on that or uh, not the experience, so we can provide our experience here for, for similar products for similar industries. Okay. It's a separate project, project I guess. And um, the other thing is um, that we, of course, providing data. Yeah, so uh, we have the possibility to say, okay, there is a, uh, there is a metal sheet here, yeah? so okay, maybe Maybe we can compare it with math, this metal sheet, but okay, is it uh, almost the same? Can we can we learn from it, et cetera, et cetera? So comparison, data collection uh, is, is the value, of course, we are bringing in here. Okay. Okay, and, and um, I guess, Patrick, um, based on all the studies and stuff that you guys, and I know that you're going to launch some of that information into the market soon, but... Um, 
what other areas do you think, um, you know, when we talk about sustainability, for example, right? Um, and, and Jan, you, you mentioned it earlier, CO2 is becoming a big thing, right? So you guys are going down that path as well, right? So you've got should cost modeling, but there's going to be another extra additional piece that you're going to start looking at CO2 impacts. Do you want to just talk a little bit about that too? Yep. Uh, thanks, Mo. Um, so I think it's also obvious that focusing on, on direct cost is one thing, which is which is important for sure, yeah, because also our uh, 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 measuring system are used to measure that kind of things. Um, but on the other hand, uh, also the sustainability part becomes more and more important. Um, and um, especially uh, CO2 footprint is, is, is one of the most relevant uh, impacts we have. Um, and also there, um, we as PWC uh, focus on that topic and, and, um, and uh, offer also there a, a product which, which can measure the CO2 um, uh, footprint um, of, a, of a supply chain and is also able to then say, okay, what is the, the impact of certain measures um, regarding the CO footprint? And, and I think that's, that's um, yeah, that closes the, the, the site then to really manage that kind of footprint and improve it. And that's, the, that's that component level, right, Jan? Right. So it's on the component level. So when we have all the components listed down, even the services or the service of the services, so everything what we get visible, for example, for machines or whatever, we are able to bring the CO2 logic to each of these pieces. So every screw has a CO2 footprint based on the energy that it's used, what is produced, et cetera, et cetera. So if we then calculate up to the entire component, what you are using, you have all the CO2, uh, CO2 footprints together and you have your CO2 footprint from the component. And then when you would like to reduce it, what you are doing, you open up the drill down and figure out, okay, this piece here, this is what, what increases our footprint really. And this is the impact on our component on CO2 footprint. Let us work on this to get that down. And this, these are questions what we always find in automotive, in manufacturing. There are a lot of questions. Yeah, a square meter um, a car glass. So what CO2 footprint is, it, is in there? And so these are the questions which arises, uh, which come out to us, and we can answer that now. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> hey, awesome. Um, might be one for a sustainability topic uh, at another time. I think we're going to dive into that. We, uh, you're going to see some more videos from us on this, I think, going forward. Sustainability is it's obviously such a, an important topic in procurement Absolutely. now. Um, so yeah, no, that's great. Guys, thank you very much. Um, Obviously a very complex topic um, and, you know, I'm certainly not the expert. Jan, Patrick and the team are the experts. So if you want to know more, you know, feel free to reach out to them uh, or reach out to me and I can connect you. Uh, but that's been a really good conversation, guys. Um, and, and like I said, this could be broadened out. We could, you know, uh, talk about this for a long time. Um, but we'll put some of the links down so you can uh, connect to further documentation. Um, and yeah, hopefully uh, it's resonated and, and anybody who's in manufacturing and automotive will fully understand how important this is. So uh, let's, uh, let's discuss it again and take it, um, uh, and take it one step further once you've got the, the CO2 piece uh, ready to, to showcase. Thanks guys, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. We'll catch up. Thank you very much. Take care, see ya, bye-bye.